welcome to Baltimore Clayworks and our fantastic show, We Are Clay, which celebrates the multitudes of shades that clay, as well as the people who love to work with it, come in. So it celebrates diversity, creativity, as well as just the, that, that spark of um, ideas that the, you know, touching clay can, can bring into your life. Um, in the front, we have some fantastic pieces. We have just, just majestic um, work by Dante Hayes from his True King series, Original King. I just, it just, there's this, this heft and strength to it. Kind of has, you know, like a little bit of a, a football helmet, but it also reminds me of like the Benin bronzes. Um, great contrast between like the texture and the smooth clay and then this metallic black, it just really exudes, um, you know, like this power and just, you know, this, this person's definitely a king. Um, also sort of with a royal feel is George Rod Rodriguez's um, work, um, Makaida. Uh, I, I love how he can take something just as simple as a sprig mold and, you know, engulf and encrust his work in it. And it becomes this like celebration of texture, but also um, his finishes just gives this, this piece, all of his work, this like artifact feel. And, you know, it just feels like it's from this culture from, you know, eons ago that just, you know, celebrates the, the life and creativity then and now. And with creative surfaces, we have um, Maria Aldra um, Aldrate's work. Uh, I love the wordplay where it's C is for C. Um, and her work is really exciting and it's interesting because she's playing around with the materials. She's using colored porcelain to add, you know, these, these like little pockets of color here and there. But then on this piece, she's using paper pulp and pushing the paper pulp on to create this like soft, um, sort of inflated pillowy form. And I, I love the non-traditional surfaces and just playing around with the possibilities and being open to experimenting. Uh, and it's so colorful and joyful. Um, a little more subdued on the color, but still joyful with a lot of energy is um, Kingman Park's forest visual visualization. I'm having trouble speaking, but the work speaks for itself. The fantastic, just the texture of in her trees and that expression of, you're not sure if it's like, like disgust or they stub their toe, but she just always has such a uh, this amazing way to convey emotion um, with her work. And I also love the, the contrast of like the texture in the trees with the texture that um, Dante's work and George's work. So just things kind of you know, coalesce and they, they play so well together. Um, working down, we have Kung Young Kim and um, the delicacy, the intricacy, you know, how she's using piping um, skills, like, you know, cake decorating skills to make these intricate surfaces. Uh, I love the, the look in their eyes, like there's, there's, they're conversing with one another and then the two pieces also sort of have this little conversation happening. Uh, the sparks of luster. Then moving on, kind of playing around with the materials. In a different way, we have um, Josh Van Stippen's work. This, it's this the, the, the his uh, figuring out how to display the work is really is innovative and it's it's new and it's kind of fun. Uh, these just simple tubes that the work balances on, and then also just playing around with the materials and like the heat and fluxes and such that play uh, such an important role in ceramics, but then using them in a new way. So you can see where he sort of slip trailed these sort of lacy forms that kind of remind me of like cross sections of something. 
um, it's like a cellular level, but then playing around with, um, it could be a glaze, it could be um, almost like a, a lower temperature clay or a faience, and just like firing it so like the gravity of the heat of the kiln is sort of frozen in time. Um, and then these just like this like delectable ooze of, of the, the glaze coming through that just you know, they feel scientific, but they're still sort of playful. There's a slight confectionery feel to them as well. Um, and just a lot of, a lot of fun, um, but also mastery of the materials. Uh, in addition to mastery of materials, we have Emily Lamb's work where she yeah, is a master of clay and glass blowing. So these, uh, these pieces probably can be uh, related to during our COVID panic time uh, and somnolence, you know, we probably have a little bit of sleepless nights. But the, the you know, taking that the you know glass, which is you know such a hard um, material, but making it feel soft and voluminous. You know, these you know sort of pillows that engulf, but also um, cradle. The bodies. There's a nice dichotomy too with the glassiness and the matte surface on the figures. Um, and then behind, sort of like sharing that space, we have another Dante Hayes um, work with the signature texture that I really, I mean, I love texture, and his pieces are just like a playground for your eyes. This one's called Motherboard. You can kind of see some subtle. Um, uh, references to circuitry and the, you know, like the, the motherboards that are in computers and other um, uh, uh, the devices that surround us. Um, but then we have, and I love how like the sunlight is just hitting this perfectly, uh, Ashlyn Pope's cup set with her um, sort of the cotton um, blossoms and these beautiful little basket um, textured pieces that the, that the uh, cups rest in because you know, they won't quite sit flat, but these, they just feel so nice in your hand. You know, just that, that, that curve just fits so well, the bare clay contrasting with the glossiness. And then this is very beautiful, um, elegant tray that they kind of nest on. I, I like it when like you have that combination of something that's functional, but it's decorative and, you know, is it necessary? Yes. It's, it's a stage for these beautiful cups. Um, in our side hallway, we have some other fantastic works. Yet another Dante Hayes, just, you know, superstar blowing up right now. Uh, True King Syria, the Warrior King. Um, this this guy's definitely been through it and survived and thrived. Um, again, just a great command of the materials, playing around with the sort of like, you know, the the gushier glaziness, but the just the beautiful chocolate brown of the clay contrasting with that pink, um, the metallic black with the glasses and the gold grill, but also that, that signature texture. I just, you know, his, his forms are so compelling, but you know, I'm a texture girl at heart, and so I just love this work so much. Um, and then as his neighbor, we have uh, Ashlyn Pope, another set. This one's a little bit different than the first one in that she's um, slip trailing the, the cotton blossoms on. So there's like another, there's an extra, you have the matte surface, it fits so nicely in your hand, but then you have that tactile quality where you can feel the, um, the drawings. Um, a little added, added weaving that just kind of like, you know, a physical weaving that kind of goes with the, um, the, the ceramic basket, um, of the the base and just you know it's a it's a simple tray but it just really gives it such prominence and elegance and you know raises it up so you can see the the details but they are such lovely comfortable cups to hold 
And then we have this piece is just a party for your eyes. Um, Maria Aldralce melted down, literally, yep. Um, just the, the gooeyness, again, the knowing the materials and the viscosity and the, you know, when to stop the firing so you get those like just juicy little drips. Um, it, it almost makes your teeth hurt in, in, a, in a good way, just this sort of uh, colorful, um, candy-coated, juicy, um, exuberant surface on this sort of amorphous form. Um, also, we have two phenomenal works by Aaron Caldwell. Uh, I just, I really love these pieces because you can see where the artist is uh, researching um, other cultures and vessels and times. You know, these have like the full belly of the storage or cooking vessels that you might find in Africa. But then he's also incorporating mixed media in such a beautiful metaphorical way. So he has his own hair. There are um, nails added uh, that kind of reference the um, Kisi figures of Congo. And then he also has uh, cocoa butter gazelle, has cocoa butter, and then the nappy hair coconut oil in the summertime, he's using those natural elements uh, or materials as a, a surface coating. And, you know, there's just um, such a rich significance, but then it also gives you this other layer, uh, you know, surface layer and coloring. And I just love the masterful way that he's using the clay, how he's like, the thumb marks and the, and, the, and the finger marks are just like left there as a rough kind of almost like furry texture. But there's such a confidence in, you know, how he's forming it. And, you know, I, I like it when it, like, you know that this was made by a person. And it, ha it retains that, to that, that warmth and um, the gestural quality of the texture. And then in our back room, we have a, this lovely, well, everything's a lovely mix, but we have um, a mix of artworks. We have this trio of boxes by Wes Brown, who is a resident here. Uh, I love the, just the strong architectural artifact quality to them. Uh, he's using an iron-rich stoneware, fire in the gas, with a little bit of reduction, so you're getting almost like a cast iron, um, you know, forged uh, vibe from these. And what's also kind of fun is they look like they're just these massive monolithic sculptures, but they also have this hidden bonus of being containers. So, you know, just that, how, you know, the lines sort of go with some of the marks and the planes happening in the piece, it just works so, so well, and just that subtle sheen, you know, it just really does feel like it's raw iron. We have another fantastic George Rodriguez piece, the little touch of bronze glaze, um, that, the sprigging, almost like a, like a hood decorating that the, uh, the figure seems to be wearing. Um, there's like a, a fierceness to the, um, the face as well that really kind of uh, draws your eye in and you can see it maybe in like a, a ritual sense or purpose in the, um, you know, from you know, your personal use or from another culture perhaps. But that one, his work really ties in well to Angelique Scott's. So here we have um, her sort of like almost like a, a cauldron um, self-portrait. Uh, nice mixed media use with like the, um, the fibers 
there's incense. Um, she's using uh, cowrie shells and beads to kind of add a little, you know, like it just it gives it a little bit of bling, but then it also retains that ritual form and feeling. She's got the rich copper bronze glaze with a little bit of like highlighted paintedness. And again, just the use of mixed media is, is lovely and ties the, uh, the pieces together really well. Uh, over here we have a trio of vases by Paul Grigg sort of uh, riffing on his The Windflower series. Um, what I really love about his work, sort of like Aaron's work, is that you, know, you see the mark of the maker, you see the pinchiness and how the clay was like pushed and squished, and, and uh, his work retains that memory of being made or being born, and it's just a, a really, it adds a really rich texture, but also that that connection to to the maker and um, you know you know how this was formed and it's it's has an elegance to it it's not overly refined and smooth and that's what I, I love the, that novelty texture um, and then we also have sort of a mixture of 2D and 3D uh, Hannah Pierce's uh, work uh, what's really fun about Hannah's work is it becomes this sort of like, almost like flat 2D facade where she's doing this expert painting um, and, and details. But then you also have the sculpted details and you have this surprise on the other side, this, this sort of, uh, this tower of chairs uh, wedged between the wings of the angel and the, the boarded up windows. Uh, I just love how she sort of approaches the clay and thinks of it, you know, like a three-dimensional picture, and you get these little surprises, but also just the, the trompoid details that she's putting into her pieces and the sort of skewed perspective, you know, things are sort of, you know, it feels almost like you, you're inflating and distorting that picture plane. By Maria Adralte. Um, and again, she's playing around with the material. She's letting the clay be the clay, but then pushing it to maybe doing something it doesn't want to do or does, and playing around with temperatures. So it's, you know, this sort of fun pyramid form. It's got like a little bit of a, almost like a sway, like it's gonna like walk. And um, there's this sort of nice little like swoop gesture, like it's just kind of strolling around, but we caught it mid, mid stride. Um, and just the thick impasto application of the um, underglazes or the slips and the, the shadows that creates, but also that, you know, almost like frostiness to it. Her, her work has this nice confectionery feel. And in the middle room, we have this mind-blowing, amazing, astonishing work by Anto Felipe. Uh, just so much going on here visually, but just so much craft, um, craftsmanship and hand skills. Uh, you have these like beautiful gold fringe, this embroidery, but then just the delicate detailed handling of the fingers and the little creases around the eyes and, and the nose subtle application of, of just a slight little pink blush to some of the um, to the surface. But just such an amazing piece. It's entitled Wade. Like you're wading into the water and you kind of feel that immersion kind of maybe after a long day into like a bathtub too. I think we all need those relaxing self-care times. But it's just a joyful um, conglomeration of, of skills and color. Um, here, a little less joyful, but you know, a potent work um, by Victoria Walton, The Wounds We Wear. Um, her work talks about, you know, like this uh, medical or physical issues with the body, like wounds that sometimes are physically 
present, but then there could also be wounds that are more internal or mental. um and then the mixed media gauze trying to heal and repair and and bring the the halves together back into a whole. um perfect for baltimore not only is it like oreos orange but we have this phenomenal wrap by george rodriguez um it's a very sweet wrap he's got a very um this chivious but warm look to his face i know that they might not be people's favorite animals but just so well done with the sprig texture um and you know this wrap sort of in like a costume or this armor or um you know just uh the sensitivity in in the face that sort of like contrasts with the, the busy energy of um all the textures uh happening and um in case you didn't know it rats are actually ticklish so uh you know i'm not saying you should tickle a rat and send to see it but fun fact um here we have a really phenomenal um wall piece by um Rob Colehouse revision 01 you know he's building and then cutting and sectioning the pieces uh there's also a nice um exploration and control of the surfaces where he's using different um clay or um different glazes to get like the the contrast adding crackle glaze with some like little details um you know darker wash uh and then these like blue rose decals around but it's 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 a fun mixture of something that feels so modern and industrial uh and perfect you know like a like a robot or a cyborg but then you have the fine lines and the cracks that kind of and those you know the blue decals that you you know the roses you might see on a teacup on this piece and so there's this like push and pull and this dichotomy um with the story that's being told um for this work uh or here we have um a former resident of ours Mujun Ko and her sort of uh her 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 faces which are just so much fun because you find something new every time you look at them uh she's almost just engulfing the piece in the sort of like graffiti uh there's just words and pictures and her own sort of like stream of consciousness all the way uh it's just you know encircling uh the work and picking up you know like yeah they're going with the curves or like these tears but then there's always these like little hidden gems um uh, that uh a mix of english and korean that gives you um a little bit of insight into her world and it's just uh a lovely piece you know the balance the humor and um you know there's like a, a joyful sadness to it um next to her we have this very sensitive um bust this portrait by um Munjoni Merryweather and um again I I'm a sucker for texture and mixed media and this has got it all you know using a little bit of iridescent paint to kind of um bring some highlights to the figure fake eyelashes which is hilarious but they work um the beautiful headdress and the earrings but it's just such a sensitive portrait you know even though the surface is very rough and um you know rustic there's just a very there's a softness and a personality and a sensitivity uh to this work which i really love and respond to because it's it's like someone you feel like you you know this person like they could be your neighbor or your coworker or your friend and um just it's a really lovely way to handle the clay as well as to incorporate the mixed media into it and then this 
So, and we are here in the, the final, the small room. Um, sort of a mixture of uh, a little bit of nostalgia and contemporary pieces or ideas. So we have um, Clingman's Parks, the uh, rainy season. Uh, it's been, it was rainy the other day. This is definitely the, the mood that we were feeling, but it's beautiful and sunny today. Um, again, just her, her attention to details, those little dots of luster um, that kind of draw you in, uh, the contrasting glaze, the white with the, just the blue, and the masterful expressions um, that just, they, there's, like, there's humor there, but then there's also like a, a sympathy and a compassion that they elicit. Um, another monolithic head by George, um, and again, just has that, like, it reminds me of some, like, the Olmec heads, you know, in, in Mexico, just that heavy duty, you know, just the strength, the, the, the carving where it's bringing out some of the grogginess, it just has this stone carved feeling to it, um, with the, the washes, but the, the masterful use of the sprigs to, um, enhance that surface and, and create this like helmet or armor that you know it gives it protection but also implies like power and, and, and status and um, you know this is a important person who uh, you know resonated or resonates with their uh, with their people um, over here we have some quieter works uh, Angelique Scott's The Grandmother's Jewelry Box. I love the that nostalgic feel to it, but also, you know, like we, I just, you know, we, a lot of us maybe have memories of like getting to like play in your grandmother's jewelry box and like the treasures that you could find in there that maybe one day you inherited. Um, and um, this is a fun piece by our new uh, resident artist, Jenny Reed. It's called 2020 Still Life. I'm sure there's elements in here that we can all sort of relate to. Um, you know, there's like knitting and scrabble and sewing and all the things that we were doing to kind of keep ourselves busy and maybe healthy with a little bit of lemon. Um, or maybe you're making lemonade in these uh, difficult times. But uh, I love the use of her mixed media, um, the sort of uh, illustrative, playful way that she is using the clay, and it just uh, it has, you know, this this fun sort of like random spilling out of the objects from the bowl, and you know, time time has no meaning in these days with Corona and lockdown, but. We're going to close in on Kana Zora's work, um, a really potent piece. It's called the Trenton Vase but, uh, Pandemic. It's based on a historical um, vase or jar called the Trenton Vase. And um, he's just done such a fantastic job mimicking the form and all the little details, but also creating such a massive um, uh, vessel you know, something this scale uh, and having it, you know, be just, you know, intact and perfect. You know, you use some decals in it, but then just lots of very careful gold luster and underglaze paintings. And I love the idea of taking something like a historical object and then bringing it into contemporary times and, you know, changing the people who may have been like on that piece and whether they were like, royalty or whatnot, and then making it a modern sort of um, homage or um, reflection of what we're going through today, which is what those vessels did then. And I think that's what art needs to do now, is to reflect our times, to give a voice, and to allow people to express and create themselves but also to celebrate all the different voices that we are so fortunate to have, uh, you know, in our lives and, and just be open to the possibilities that those really
relationships and the, um, you know, the creativity, the skill, the, the kindness, the intelligence, the compassion that can come through um, art or just, you know, smiling hard through your mask to your neighbor. Um, so thank you so much for joining us for the We Are Play Tour. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll have more uh, details about the artists on the website too, so you can in investigate that way.